What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, March 8th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. We are here to review this week's alerts. This is here exclusively for pro members. Before we jump into the alerts, though, I want to make sure and recognize this week's member of our community for helping other traders. Adnan, you got caught being hot. Congratulations, buddy. I sent you a link to pick up some Trade Hacker swag. So keep up the good work. We've got a ton of great momentum going in the community. Uh, of course, the market was down this week, which helps a lot for those of us who had short Delta. So I think that got everybody a little bit more excited. And uh, just keep up the good work. I mean, I think this is such a great resource for all members involved just the uh, camaraderie and just everybody helping each other. It's so awesome to see. So keep it up, guys and gals. And let's jump into the alerts for this week, starting with Monday, which was the, let's see here, was it the fourth? Yeah. Okay, so the first, first trade was a closing trade in EWW, and we had a, we had a short strangle on there. I uh, had to make uh, no adjustments on this one. Booked over 45% of max profit. We were in it for just 18 days. So we clo closed out at EWW. Implied volatility contracted significantly. Gave us the chance to book that winner. If we take a look at a chart of EWW, just to see where the implied volatility is now, I looked earlier today, yeah, and it's, it's still really low, which is really interesting. I mean, with EWW, going down significantly over the last couple of weeks, implied volatility has still stayed low. So not looking to enter in EWW anymore at this point, especially with IV popping amongst some other symbols here. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good trading opportunities available outside of that one. So we are out of EWW. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So we closed one set of our short call verticals in IWM. This was in March. So with only 11 days to expiration at that point, uh, and so we went ahead and just closed that out. Price moved. Now, of course, looking back, we, you know, we probably wish, uh, we would have held this cause price moved down, um, throughout this week, which was uh, given us a better, uh, spot in this position. But, uh, at this point we were, you know, getting to that point where we were about five to one on our short Delta to theta ratio. So we're actually looking to cut loose some short Delta, potentially add some. And this was a short Delta position that we went ahead and cut loose. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And of course, you know, now after this down move, we'd seen, we've seen this week, we're only at about two to one on a ratio. So that's how quickly things can change. And that's why I say, don't, don't over adjust. And that's why we keep that range of one to one to five to one is because you 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 don't want to over adjust because things can change very quickly. Uh, but if we take a look at IWM, uh, let's see where we're at now. We'll take a look at our analyze tab, and you can kind of see the down movement we've seen this week. Pretty pretty nice little sell off here. Uh, so now we've just got this iron condor, which is now hanging out kind of in the lower end of the range here, but still uh, still good to go. Nothing to do on IWM at this point. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we rolled one set of our short call verticals from March to April. Uh, price had moved higher out of range, very similar to IWM. So we just rolled that, adjusted our strikes to keep that short delta and, um, and, and keep that on. So now in QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals. This one after the roll, you can see we've, we've gained some profit since that, since that roll. And then if we take a look at the other one, uh, you can see we're, we're almost at 50% of max profit or a little over. So we could have, we could have rolled or adjusted this today, but we're going to go ahead and wait, uh, until next week. Obviously if price move continues to move lower, that will be good. And then we'll just roll up our strikes like we did in DIA today, which I'll touch, well, I'll touch on here in a second. So that's where we're at in QQQ. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we closed out our put vertical side of the iron condor. Price had breached our upside break even, so there's very little value left. Uh, so at that point, we we're still holding on to the call vertical. And if we take a look at SPY, uh, now this is, the, uh, this is the call vertical here. So it's come back into range there. And then we've also got 
this iron condor, which we put on in a, on a later alert, which I'll touch on here, but still very centered. Got a little bit of profit on that at this point. So now we're just in the wait and see game here. Uh, keep in mind, we are seven days to expiration left on our March. So we'll be looking to do something with this next week, either roll it to keep that short delta or close it out depending on where we're at overall. So look for that early next week. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we, we basically just rolled that out from uh, April with 21 days to expiration. Remember when we have uncovered naked positions on, once we get down to that 21 days to expiration level, we like to roll out to the next cycle. We kept our strikes the same, so we're still inverted on this piece. And, and so we're just gonna continue to collect some more theta and hopefully price has stabilized in Natty Gas. So if we take a look at our Analyze tab, that's this one here. You can see we're still inverted. The calls are uh, lower than our puts, so that we call that inverted with the 2.75 and three. And then on our other piece, we've got here, we're also inverted and you can see price has moved up a little bit. So we're getting back some profit on that piece as well. So things have seemed to stabilize a little bit in that gas or actually, you know, it's just kind of bouncing around in this range. It looks like a pretty wide range, but based on the, the, the spread that we have, we can, we can accommodate that. And in fact, a little bit more higher prices would actually be good. So hopefully things keep going good in Natty Gas. Next trade was an opening trade in Adobe. So we put on a pre-earnings long straddle with just 10 days to expiration. They announce on 314. So that's next week after market closes. So we'll want to be out of the trade by then. Remember on these pre-earnings long straddles, we're looking for an expansion in implied volatility, which we've seen, and then a decent sized price move, which we haven't really seen enough of a price move yet. Uh, and you can see right here, we're basically at break even. But if we can get prices to continue lower, we'll book a profit there. As we get closer and closer, our profit target goes down because we, we wanna be out of this. We wanna book a profit, obviously. So, um, you know, unless we get a major move down or a huge spike in implied volatility, we're probably going to, you know, if we get a little bit of a down move, may not get the full 20% we're looking for, but if we can book a 10% profit on this trade, I'd be happy to get out with that. So hopefully we see that happen next week. Next trade was an opening trade in TLT. So in this case, we, we put on a, and, and I got a, quite a few questions in the community about this. We put on a long put vertical which is a short trade, right? We want TLT to go down. Um, but since TLT has a little bit of an inverse correlation to SPY, that actually adds a little bit of long delta. Okay, so um, I, I did a video that's now posted in the community, is posted on the blog that kind of explains this whole concept. I used, I used this trade, TLT is the example. So if, if that doesn't make sense, uh, go ahead and watch that video because it'll hopefully explain what I mean by that. But let's take a look at TLT. And it has moved up since our trade was put on. So you can see it's it's slightly out of range now uh, because stocks have moved down, bonds have moved higher. And so that's where we're at on our TLT trade. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we closed out one set of our short call verticals. Uh, booked a nice profit on that piece of the trade. Um, and then we're still holding our other one, which I already showed you. And then uh, the next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So we closed out one of our short call verticals in IWM uh, as price moved back into range there. So uh, I already showed you IWM because now we're just holding that uh, that full iron condor. So we got rid of got rid of the other piece. So now we're just holding this iron condor. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SPY. I already mentioned that one. We put on a new iron condor in SPY as implied volatility spiked in that IV percentile. Got above that 50 level, sold some premium there. Rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we had a short call vertical, previously part of an iron condor that we've been kind of rolling and holding for that short delta exposure. We got to a point where we're over 50% of max profit. So we just rolled down our strikes uh, April still had 41 days to expiration, so we didn't want to roll out to the next expiration. So we just stayed in April and just simply rolled our strikes down from 265, 270 down to 255, 260. 
So if we take a look at DIA, you can see that's where we're at. So it's, it's moved up a little bit since we did this roll today, uh, but you can see still, still within range. So just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that piece. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SMH. So we added a short strangle here. Price was hanging out in the upper end of our range on our other one. And so with implied volatility popping today, IV percentile got, a, got above 60 in SMH. So we went ahead and added some premium there. And so here's our uh, original inverted uh, adjusted strangle. You can see it's kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. We've been, uh, and then so what we did is we just added another short strangle here to, uh, to collect some more credit and uh, give, give ourselves a chance to, to book some more profits here. So you can see what happened in SMH implied volatility as price has been coming down, implied volatility going up. So good time to sell some premium there, it looks like. Uh, next trade, closing trade in XLV. So this is a short call vertical that we put on originally for some short delta exposure. Uh, we did roll it once. And then now down to March with just seven days to expiration, we needed to either roll or close it out. Had a, had a nice profit in it, I think $260. So we went ahead and booked that in XLV. Now, if we take a look at a chart, XLV, the, uh, the implied volatility has spiked and it's, it's nice and high as well. So if implied volatility stays high in the next week, we may look to add another position here, maybe sell some premium uh, centered around the current price at that point. So look for that potentially next week. And lastly, we opened a trade in FXI. So again, implied volatility popping in a lot of different symbols today. And so FXI was the one we chose here. And we just did a tight iron condor. If we take a look at FXI, uh, implied volatility popping up. And then we just did a tight, and and the and the reason we did this is because, I mean, this is a this is a forty two dollar symbol, so you can't get really wide, and uh, and collect enough credit to make it worth it. So we just did a tight iron condor here, and um and and that gave us enough credit to make the trade worthwhile. That now keep in mind that lowers your probability of success, but we're gonna manage this quicker too. So we're gonna look to close this out between twenty five and thirty five percent of that max profit. So those are all the trades. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Um, by the way, I mentioned we are, we're about two to one on our short delta to theta ratio. Uh, so that's a good, I think that's a good position to be in, in the current market cycle. And then, uh, and then, and, but, and I mean, think about how quickly this changed. I mean, we were, I can't remember exactly. I'll have to look, but I think our account was sitting at about ninety-four thousand at the beginning of the week. Now it's almost a hundred thousand. So our P and L has is the last few days has continued to hit new highs, and you know that's just the that's just the power of this strategy of keeping that short premium, keeping that short delta, diversifying in different symbols, different time frames. You know all these different things that we teach and we talk about over and over and over. And it's just the power of this the uh, this methodology. By the way, <laughs> I we we do some promotions on social media, and I love when I get the que I, I love when I get the statement um, that hey why why are you teaching people how to trade if you could just make money yourself? And the reality is, we we've made a lot of money trading, and and you know this is just our alerts portfolio. My personal account's much bigger, and yeah, we make a lot of money. But why would I not share that? I mean, look at look at what's going on in the community. People are making money. They're sharing trade ideas. Everybody's working together. After you know, anyone who makes that statement just doesn't is either not ever made any money. And it's like, why why would I just keep that to myself, right? And it just it baffles me when people say that or ask that. But you know, you guys know how powerful this is, especially if you've been a part of it for for a little while now. And just the fact of people helping each other and helping each other become successful. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? It's not about, oh, I can make a bunch of money and I'm just going to keep that to myself. It's all about helping you guys. And, and I love it. I mean, what gets me fired up in the morning is not, oh, great. I made a bunch of money trading. I mean, that used to do that used to do it for me, but guess what? After you do it for a while, that becomes almost irrelevant. Now what gets us up in the morning 
is seeing others' success. And the and now it, it's really coming through now that we created this community and we've got a lot of people engaged, a lot of people, you know, posting and getting excited, excited and helping other traders. And, you know, just seeing the success of our members, it's just, I love it guys. So keep it up. Uh, and, and I hope, I hope you're, uh, I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am because I love, 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 love seeing your guys' success. Um, all right, where was I going before I got off on that tangent? Oh yeah, other, our other trades. So we've got 6B, which is the British pound. We've got a short strangle on here. Prices come down nicely here. So we got a little bit of profit. And you know, if we get a little bit more down movement, we'll look to potentially book this one next week. We've got oil. We've got two pieces on in oil, which it also has come back nicely. So not only has stocks moved down, but our other positions have behaved in our favor as well, giving us a, a, a great week. So we've got this piece, which is a straddle in the 56 straddle in oil. So coming back with some nice profits there. And in oil, we've got how many days? 39. So we've got a lot of time left in May. So we're not looking to roll out yet, uh, but just going to continue to collect that theta. Hope price stabilizes and stays in our range and do what we do. The other piece here is this inverted strangle. Again, same kind of thing. We're just we're just collecting more theta, waiting for time to pass. ES, we've got a long put vertical that we've continued to keep on for that short delta exposure. So we'll continue to do that there. ZN, which is the 10 year note. We've got a strangle on here, got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more in ZN. In wheat, We've got an iron condor, which has breached our downside break even. If we take a look at the call side, you know, we've still got a decent amount of premium in there, which is why we have not adjusted yet. Uh, the bottom just fell out of wheat, man. Uh, but we're just going to continue to manage that as needed. Next week, we might potentially look to add another iron condor in wheat, kind of centered around the current price. Uh, so we'll have a couple of them there and then potentially take that off if price moves lower. I mentioned Adobe, you mentioned DIA, EA. Uh, so this was a suggestion from Big Willie in our community. Price is still very centered. Got a little bit of profit here. Interesting thing with EA is uh, even with um, you know price moving down, uh, implied volatility was moving down. And then with price moving up, implied volatility has still continue to move down. So a little interesting little movement going on in EA, but we'll continue to manage that one as needed. EEM, we uh, we could have taken this one off today, uh, but we will, we want to keep that short delta exposure over the weekend. So obviously if we get a down move, that's going to help. Uh, but we'll look to, uh, to do something with this next week. This is in March. So we've got seven days to expiration. So we will either roll or close this one out next week. I mentioned FXI, IWM, IYR. Uh, this has not been moving in uh, in step with the markets, so it's it's actually stayed stayed bid a little bit where the rest of the market's moving lower. And so we've got this piece in March, and it is it's way out here, way out of range. But just kind of holding on to this, see if we can get a little bit of a down movement next week. If not, we'll either roll or close that piece. And then we've got a full iron condor similar to FXI, where it's just kind of a tight iron condor since it's a lower price symbol. Uh, this is pretty centered here. Got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more. NVIDIA, we've got an iron condor. Actually, we we're uh, when price was way up here and, and very centered, we were potentially uh, almost ready to, I didn't, I didn't put in an order, but I was looking to potentially put in an order to get filled and, and book that one, but price moved lower, but we're still well within range. So just waiting for some more time to pass in NVIDIA and no uh, no earnings coming up or anything. So we got plenty of time there. I mentioned the Qs, I mentioned SMH, SPY, XLK. We've got this long put vertical here that we've been holding for short delta. Got a nice move this week in our favor. So just continuing to hold that. And XRT, we've got this adjusted strangle, which again was hanging out way up here near the break evens come all the way back down into range in our favor so just holding that for some more theta decay and some more time to pass there so those are all of our trade alerts those are all of our positions i hope everybody has a great weekend 
and hopefully this implied volatility stays high into next week. We get a little bit more down movement. That would be excellent for our portfolio. Have a good weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon.